<laughs> a queen in golden armor. Like, wow. The moment is almost upon us. Our precious has returned. And a lot of sweat, tears, and actual forgery went into bringing us the rings of power. Are you prepared to find out what stunts went so wrong and what design choices went so right? A lot of what you see on TV will be what we saw on the day as well. Number one. Here we thought they just hired actors with big feet. I think that people will really enjoy the half-foot world. I really do. But turns out that the prosthetic hobbit feet were a pain to navigate. Sarah Zwangovani, who plays Marigold Brandyfoot, found... The prosthetic feet were actually really challenging at first, but we had this incredible team of people that helped us with them, kept refining them, which by the end, they became part of us. Number two, three stunt people were seriously injured. Dana Grant had a head injury. After being scanned, she found out she had an eight millimeter brain aneurysm and an upper spinal injury, AKA her neck. She had to go for surgery. Alyssa Cadwell suffered a serious injury in February and was paid 500,000 by Amazon. And Thomas Kiwi injured the rotator cuff in his right shoulder so bad that he left the production. Yikes. Number three. So if you were complaining about the VFX, we've got news for you. The opening sequence was done entirely with practical effects. That's right. The title was forged in studio. Special effects advisor Douglas Trumbull said, there are magical things that happen in nature, gravity, fluids, lighting, that one couldn't really design using computer graphics. That forging was done by pouring an alloy mixture of bronze and aluminum into molds of compressed sand. It was filmed at a whopping 5,000 frames per second with a Phantom Flex 4K camera, so it could be shown in ultra slow motion. Number four, the orcs were mostly practically created, but why does that impress people? Of course, the production required a lot of them and the ones that are further back are CGI. The rest of the orcs were played by actors, but the closer to the camera they were, the more detailed applications they had. Executive producer Lindsay Weber said that they worked really hard to make the prosthetics super thin and more comfortable, but added, there are times when they're wearing things, teeth for example, and sorts of other stuff that do make that hard. They tried to use real prosthetics and minimize the visual effects because the audience can see them. They were really supportive of what we wanted to do and they were excited about what we wanted to do. Number five, an elf and a dwarf walk down a hallway together. What could go wrong? The single most complicated scene is just that. Doesn't sound so complicated in theory. However, Patrick McKay explained it best saying, you have to shoot everything twice. So it will be down to the millimeter, mimicking the exact same moves. And then the two things get spliced together and create this effect of one person being taller and smaller. I think we, we uh, take this responsibility really seriously. Number six, ditch the dresses, stick with armor. It was bigger than me, it was bigger than us. Cynthia Adai Robinson was over the moon about her costume. The queen in golden armor is nothing to scoff at. I had all the armor on and this incredible helmet, and this was all conceived by Kate Hawley, our amazing costume designer. What specifically left her in awe is it didn't feel like they feminized the armor in any way. She thought her character was going to be dressed in things like flowing gowns, but no. And I just thought, oh my God, wow. Number seven, do you think anybody offers group rates on spelunking? The original idea for the underground dwarf realm was to have it set under a mountain in New Zealand. However, once they factored in the hundreds of crew who would have to go spelunking just to get there, the danger and the expense were enough to have them film on a soundstage and create the set from scratch. Number eight, despite their bragging about practical effects, a ton of CGI was used. So the show isn't entirely without its VFX, of course. And places you may find it is when you get into stunts and action, including the things humans just physically can't pull off. The prosthetic beasts and creatures needed further advancements in slight ways as well. Really built as much as they could so that we could actually react to physical sets. And despite their claim that not many VFX were used, 9,500 were. That's more than the original Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit movies combined. Number nine. Now we shall take a look at Venice, or rather, Middle Earth Venice. The set is filled with all kinds of different intricate details, like the pulley and lever system they used to lift their horses. While it may come across as a simple moment, it shows how advanced they are as a society to have thought of it. 
Production designer Ramsey Avery said, We looked to art based in Egypt, North Africa, and the Middle East to inspire the bold shapes, rich colors, and geometrical ornament that are central to the Mediterranean sensibility of this kingdom. Another particularly important influence was Venice, Italy, thanks to one comment made by Tolkien. I just got back from Numenor. I mean, Venice. Number 10. We aren't talking dragon scales here. The scale of characters in this Tolkien franchise was all over the place and quite possibly one of the biggest challenges the actors faced. So they had to go to Scale Academy for a few hours to learn about the technicalities of the work. I think that's quite surprising. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Number 11. These boats are actually sailable. Ramsey Avery said, We keep trying to find something that said Numenorian as opposed to pirate ship. The long triangular sails represented the elves' ships, and we needed something that stood on its own for Numenor. One night, I was looking through some pictures and I saw the crown of Gondor. I'd always thought of that crown as eagle's wings, but I looked at it again and I thought, My god, that's a ship's sail there. Number 12. The security measures may sound intense. Aggressive security measures were taken to keep the writing a secret. The windows were taped closed, and they had a security guard doing fingerprint clearance for anyone entering the writer's room. Number 13. Core characteristics make it easier to write about different factions. Director J.A. Bayona broke down the different worlds each faction lives in, saying, I mean, it's such a rich and complex universe and so different. So if you want to go for nature, you would find the Harfoots. If you want to get more political, you will go to the elves. There's more melodrama when you go to humans. It feels very rich and complex, and I really enjoy it a lot working with each of the worlds. It was like a perfect balance between the map that somehow Tolkien established and having a new source material. Number 14. Ain't it the dream to rise to stardom with your college bud? Actors Benjamin Walker and Robert Armayo went to the same college, which Ben claims is the reason for such success in the show in their shared shorthand communication, which he can't help but compare to their characters, and also their bond, saying, I do think Gilgalad and Elrond do kind of share an unspoken communication. Gilgalad recognizes that the half-elf needs to prove himself, and Gilgalad also recognizes that there is infinite potential for him, and he just needs a little guidance. I, li I like it. It, is, it. it should matter. It does matter. Number 15. We knew it would cost a lot, but nobody anticipated this much. The Rings of Power is the most expensive TV show ever made, with a budget of nearly one billion dollars. We wonder if that's before or after the half a million payout to Cadwell. Amazon beat out Netflix in the bidding war for the rights at 250 million. Good people doing good work in a great show. It, it, it's really gratifying. The Rings of Power has huge shoes to fill. Are you excited about the new Tolkien spinoff or are you worried it won't live up to expectations? Let us know in the comments and thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.